From Washington, this is VOA News. President Obama meets with his Burmese counterpart. And the Cold War rears its head in Syria. I'm Joe Palka, reporting from Washington. U.S. President Barack Obama praised Burma's president on Monday for his leadership in pushing through political reforms while warning that ethnic and communal violence targeting minority Muslims in Burma must stop. Dan Robinson has more for VOA from the White House. Mr. Obama said the shift in relations was made possible by President Thane Sein's leadership in moving down a path of political and economic reform he said Dane Sain shared his plans for what comes next on a long journey with much work to be done. The manner in which uh, he intends to continue to move forward on uh, releasing more political prisoners, uh, making sure that the government of Myanmar institutionalizes uh, some of the political reforms that have already taken place, how uh, rule of law is codified, so that uh, it continues into the future. Dan Robinson, VOA News, the White House. The U.S. leader said Mr. Thane Sain had made genuine efforts to end decades of ethnic warfare that has blocked Burmese unity. A wave of car bombings and suicide attacks against Shiite Muslims ripped through Iraqi cities Monday, killing at least 76 people and wounding scores more, extending the worst sectarian violence since U.S. troops withdrew from the country in December of 2011. The attacks increased the number of Iraqis killed in sectarian clashes over the past week to more than 200, including 70 who died Friday in a series of bombings targeted. Sunnis. President Obama called his Lebanese counterpart on Monday to express concern about Hezbollah's active and growing role in Syria after at least 28 fighters from the Lebanese militant group were killed in clashes for the strategic town of Qusair. The White House said Mr. Obama and President Michel Suleiman agreed that all parties should respect Lebanon's policy of disassociation from the conflict in Syria and avoid action actions that would drag the Lebanese people into the war. Mr. Obama expressed his appreciation for Lebanon's open border policy in hosting refugees from Syria. He pledged continued U.S. support for this effort. Meanwhile, public diplomacy experts say a difference in perceptions dating back to the Cold War era could hamper U.S. and Russian efforts to deal with the ongoing civil war in Syria. Pam Dawkins has this for VOA. Heritage Foundation senior fellow Hella Dale says there's a love-hate relationship between the United States and Russia that is quite complicated. On VOA's Encounter program, Dale says she agrees with an Obama administration official who told her that Cold War era differences between the two countries are straining relations today. This official said, we work along the assumption that the Cold War is over. We're past that here in the United States. The Russians, they behave as though it's still on. Dale says these apparent differences are affecting U.S.-Russian efforts to organize a peace conference for Syria in June. Pam Dawkins, VOA News, Washington. For more on this story, visit our website at voanews.com. The U.S. says the right to global religious freedom was challenged last year, with governments often creating a climate of intolerance leading to hatred and violence. In an annual report, the state the State Department said on Monday that government officials worldwide are often allowed to act with impunity while violating the religious rights of their countrymen. The Nigerian military says it has retaken five districts in the country's northeast that were strongholds for an Islamist militant group. A military spokesman says troops have also arrested more than 120 members of the group, known as Boko Haram.
Fresh fighting has erupted in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo between the army and rebel group M23, the first clash between the two forces in nearly six months. The fighting 12 kilometers north of Goma on Monday was intense, involving mortars, rocket launchers, and aircraft. U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is traveling to Africa's Great Lakes region in support of a recent peace accord. The United Nations says Mr. Ban will visit the Democratic Republic of Congo on Wednesday, followed by stops in Rwanda on Thursday and Uganda on Friday. North Korea has fired short-range projectiles into its coastal waters for a third consecutive day, defying international calls for restraint. South Korea says it's trying to determine whether the North had launched guided missiles or rockets into the East Sea, also called the Sea of Japan. This is Joe Palka from the VOA News Center in Washington.